And so we're going to discuss fifth metatarsal fractures, and they have the nickname of Jones fracture, which are named after a, a British surgeon uh, who first discussed them in, in the literature. Uh, these occur on the outside of the foot and uh, the base of the fifth metatarsal, which is the prominent area you feel on the side of your foot. This slide shows a picture of the fifth metatarsal, and uh, if you look at the slot, the portion on the left side where the A is, that's the area that you feel when you put your hand on the side of your foot. The Jones fractures are designated by those zones that you see with the Roman numerals 1, 2, and 3. The thing that makes the Jones fracture unique is the way the bone gets its blood, and if you'll see on the slide to the right side how the blood enters the bone, it travels quite a long ways to finally get back into the area that we're talking about these fractures. Of course, you, everyone knows that the uh, bone will not heal without adequate blood supply. So that's what makes this a tricky fracture for healing. Uh, these are usually uh, diagnosed by uh, techniques of x-ray, physical exam, and sometimes uh, they can be what we call a stress reaction fracture that doesn't show on regular x-ray that has to be picked up by either an MRI, a CAT scan, or a bone scan. If they're seen but not very symptomatic, we can wait bare in a protected fashion and gradually return the person to activity uh, as they tolerate. And what you'll see is a walking boot on the right side in the top portion. And then the other two uh, pictures indicate things that can be put in the shoe that protect it uh, while it's healing. Um, and it usually takes about six to eight weeks to get these to heal. Again, it's due to the fact that the blood supply is somewhat curious to this uh, bone. Sometimes it can take even uh, longer and uh, take closer to 20, 20 weeks. Uh, as long as it's not painful, this is not uh, usually a problem if it takes a little more time to heal. As you can also see from the bottom of the slide, that there's a very high refracture rate uh, in these uh, injuries. This is a slide that just shows the anatomy on the outside of the foot, um, showing some of the things that we look for and watch out for as we're fixing this uh, injury. If you'll notice a little horseshoe-shaped black line, that's outlining the area uh, that you can feel inside of your foot, and that's the fifth metatarsal. Uh, base where we entered uh, the bone to fix this fracture. These are some operative pictures. Again, you can see that the bone's been traced out on the outside of the foot and the graphic there that shows the, the fracture line. And you'll see that this guide pin is placed down uh, through the tip and into the middle of the bone. And, and I think you, if you look at the bottom left, you'll see the pin going down the bone and you'll see the fracture line uh, in that metatarsal bone. Uh, we then prepare it uh, with some techniques to put a screw that you'll see in the top right and the bottom uh, picture that goes across and compresses that fracture and holds it steady to allow it to heal. Uh, after surgery, this usually remains non-weight bearing for a couple of weeks and then some protected weight bearing up to about two months. Um, once they see radiographic evidence of some healing, that it becomes non-tender and uh, it shows the signs of healing, then you can begin some modifications of the shoe and begin walking and some other exercises. The screw does not have to be removed unless it causes discomfort, and many times it's, it's never uh, a problem. So this is just a synopsis of the Jones fracture. It's a very common fracture that we see. Uh, many times they are treated surgically, but a lot of times they don't require it. But this will just give you a little outline when you hear um, that you have a Jones fracture, what, what this um, is means. Thank you.